Hello and welcome to this video on Norman's question four, which is the question called the historic environment and it changes every year for 2024. It's about Wales and the Norman conquest. So if you're watching in any other year other than 2024, please stop. This is no good for you because it changes every single year. So this question is the only one that we know about beforehand. And for your Normans exam, it's almost 50% of your marks. So you could potentially tackle it first. And for this year, it's all about Wales. That is the historic environment that you need to be refer referring to. Now, in some ways, it's no different from the essay questions that you do in um, other parts of the history course. So you would, you'll be given a, a, a question that will have a factor in it, and you need to write one paragraph on the factor in the question. We'll give some examples in a moment. But then you need to include at least one other factor that you come up with yourself, ideally two, so you'd have three paragraphs um, covering different um, factors and ideas, and then you'll finish off with a conclusion where you say why yours um, is the most important or why yours you think is, is the biggest. Um, but for this one, you must use Wales as your background knowledge. You can use other knowledge as well, um, but you need to make sure that you're referring to the historic environment in the question, which is Wales. And like I said, it's the only question in the whole history paper where we know for definite the topic that's coming up. So make sure you know enough here to get by. So here's an example of what the question might look like. The main change that the Normans made was military. How far do you agree with this statement in reference to the historic environment of Wales? So this question uses the um, what we call the, the question tail of change. So there are a couple of different options of what it could say. So it could ask you about consequences. It could ask you about significance. It could ask you about cause and cause. It, uh, it could ask you about um, causes and consequence. Um, so bear that in mind when we're looking at our questions that that's the type of stuff it can ask you about. Now, you can use other examples in your essay that are not about Wales. If you have a complete mind blank, then you can use other examples. But the bulk of your evidence needs to be about how the Normans impacted Wales. So I've got a couple of other um question stems and I want to thank uh, there's another video on YouTube called um, which is by understand history if you're wanting extra information check out their channel and there's a video called historic environment Wales which is really handy but these are some of the questions that they brainstormed that that may well come up um, they said the main reason William built castles was for trade or intimidation or defense so it could be just one of those three and they might be the other things that you come up with um, second one is the main consequence of the Norman conquest for Wales was, in, again, trade, intimidation, tied to control of the border, that sort of thing. So try and you will find, if I'm being honest with you, that a lot of the evidence you're using is going to be quite similar, but it's making sure that you tailor it to the question that you're asked. OK, you're going to be if you're asked about consequences, think about what happened because of the decisions made by the Normans. Exactly the same if you're asked about um, if you're asked about reasons or causes, tailor it to the question. So let's do a little bit of setup about Wales then. So the area between England and Wales was called the marches and that's Welsh for border. And the Welsh marches were not, a, it wasn't a clearly defined border. Today, you can, there's a clear point where you can say, right, I've got one foot in England, one foot in Wales. That wasn't the case in 1066 when the Normans took charge. As a result of that, trouble could easily spill over into England. So if Wales was um, in a time of rebellion, if there was lots of, of fighting, then that could easily spill over into England. And Wales was notoriously difficult to control because it had really dense forests and mountains. So that made it really difficult um, because it meant that people could, rebels could go and hide in those forests. It was known as a place where rebels could go into hiding. Um, and it also meant that if you were trying to go in there as an invading force, the locals would know that landscape so much better than you would. Um, it also had a history of rebellion. So the, the person pictured bottom right there um, is in a stained glass window in Wales. His name is Gruffid Ap Llewellyn, and he was seen as um, a a king of Wales, I'm using that term a bit loosely, who united Wales, but also 
pushed the border into England. He took over English land. And this is the one, this is probably the one time in history where Harold Godwinson actually did um, really helped out the Normans. In 1063, um, Harold Godwinson defeated Gruffydd at Llewellyn. If that hadn't happened, then that might have been a problem that um, the Normans were faced with once they took charge in 1066. But as long as we've got this idea that Wales is a place that has been a, a place of rebellion, that they that there have been leaders like Gruffydd at Llewellyn who've pushed the border back, it is a difficult place to control. And so when William takes charge, one of the biggest things, and if I, if I had to guess in the, this point, before your 2024 Paper 2 exam, I cannot see how they don't ask you a question where your knowledge is about castles. That is the biggest thing that Wales is, is, is famous for in terms of the Normans. And like we say, you can use your knowledge of castles from elsewhere in the course to help you with this question. It's not a case that you're just using this knowledge about Wales. The reasons why people built castles, why the Normans built castles, is going to be consistent all the way through and use that in your learning. So when we think about why they're built, and the effect on the country, think about the intimidation, think about the economic effects and the fact that towns were built near them. Think about the fact that it showed the military power and strength of the Normans when these castles were built. And as you can see from our map on the right hand side, the Welsh map marches are home to a greater concentration of medieval castle, castles than anywhere else in Europe. There are more castles in that area than anywhere else in Europe. And these were modern Bailey castles, just like you'll have studied elsewhere. So initially built in wood and then rebuilt in stone. And an example you could use is Chepstow Castle. Have a couple of specifics to sprinkle in. We'll talk a little bit more about Chepstow Castle later on. And they were built on high ground to give military advantages, but also to intimidate the locals. Local Welsh people could look up and they could see these structures and go, how do we fight back against these foreign invaders? They are using stone to build their castles, which would have been quite rare. They're also using these sort of fancy Romanesque styles, curved walls to show uh, how much superior they are. Um, so Chepstow Castle and other Mott and Bailey castles were built and they were also built in strategic positions to support their expansion into the region. So they'd be built near to uh, rivers or they'd be built near to newly conquered areas so that the soldiers based in those castles, if there were further rebellions in those newly conquered areas, they could, they could go and raid, they could go and attack and then return to the safety of their castles. Most of the castles were built near towns or by important routes um, to intimidate the local population, but also to keep a close watch on their movements. So this is the example I would be using. Uh, William Fitzosburn, who we'll learn about um, a little bit later, he built Chepstow Castle, which was on the River Wye, W-Y-E, um, and that allowed him to see any movement into the area that he controlled. Um, the local population, as we've said, would rarely have seen stone castles. So these 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 styles, these Romanesque buildings um, built in stone, it would have shown the locals just how much more advanced the Normans were from what had been seen before. And then importantly, the castles also became economic centres of control. They attacked, just as we've seen with the rest of the course, they attracted trading centres around them. So these towns, not only did they become wealthier because um, they were able, people were trading in them, but that also attracted people to come from other parts of Europe. So Normans would go and base themselves around these castles in these new, newly set up towns. And we also have other Europeans who would come over to this part of the Marches region, um, uh, this, these parts of Wales, to um, because they wanted to, they were attracted by the economic power. So a nice example of that is you have the Flemish leader. So in now what is modern day Belgium, the Flemish leader was called Wizzo, and he comes over with his supporters. Um, and that has had a long term impact on Wales. Places were named after him. So the village of Whiston is named after that Flemish leader of Wizzo. So castles have lots of knock on effects when they are built. 
And the other thing that William does to control, as well as um, setting up castles, is that he set up the marcher lords or the marcher earls. You can call them either. Now, as we know, when William, when we think about William's land ownership decisions, he takes away the power of the earls. He replaces them with Norman barons that he can control through his tenants in chief system. If you've forgotten this, go back to the main Normans video to watch that. The exception to that is the marcher lords because he knows this is an area he has to keep tight control of so he gives these three marcher lords extra powers to build castles to raise their own taxes to launch raids and to set up towns for trading and they can do this without needing the king's permission these are the three marcher lords i want you to know them because you these are the specific examples that you'll be chucking in to your evidence section of your answers so the three marcher lords are william fitz osborne roger de Montgomery and Hugh de Vranche. So we'll go through them one by one. I would say try and have one or two things that you can say about each of these um, men. Fitz Osborne was one of William's closest allies. They fought alongside each other at Hastings and he was made responsible for the south of Wales. He was um, put in charge of Hereford. He established towns and castles beyond the River Wye and we've talked about him setting up of Chepstow Castle. Um, but he also, as well as using power and uh, violence and authority, he also came to agreements with local Welsh rulers. He recognised their power in, uh, so that they would accept him as their, as their lord. Um, when William Fitz Osborne died um, in just 1071, his son, Roger de Bretoy, he became the uh, the new Earl of Hereford. And we've looked at him in the main video because he actually rebelled against William the Conqueror um, and was spared in 1075. He wasn't killed, even though all of the other earls who rebelled against him were, but he was spared because he'd been, he, his father had been such close friends with William the Conqueror. But Roger de Bretoy, he did exactly the same thing. He, when he was in charge, before he rebelled, he continued his father's policy of getting himself allied with local Welsh leaders. So we see this example of a Welsh leader called Caradog, um, who was seen and established as the ruler in the south because he'd done this deal with uh, Roger de Bretagne, that they would both recognise each other's power. Um, secondly, you've got the um, uh, marcher lord of Shrewsbury, Roger de Montgomery. Now, Roger de Montgomery, he'd ruled Normandy on William's behalf during the invasion of England. He'd not fought at, at um, Hastings. Instead, he'd stayed behind and looked after Normandy. And he was made Earl of Shrewsbury and he took land in Mid Wales, where he established Montgomery Castle, the town of Montgomery, um, and his supporters conquered further up this area called the Severn Valley. They built castles of their own um, as well. So not only were the marcher lords able to build their own castles, their supporters were also given that power to go and build their own castles. Remember, you don't have to know all of this stuff, but having a couple of examples to chuck in to show what the marcher lords have done is going to be the stuff that pushes your answer up to that highest level. You need specific evidence to get there. And then finally, Hugh de Vranche, he was put in charge of Chester and he was, again, he'd not fought at Hastings, but his father had given 60 ships to William to help the, the Norman conquest. Um, and he was given charge, Hugh de Vranche was given charge of the north of England. So he grabbed territory, he terrorised the Welsh and built castles along the river Conwy. He raided into Snowdonia, which is the area where there's a mountain range where Mount Snowdon is. So one of the key ways, as well as saying about building castles, we can also talk about William using marcher lords in order to um, control the region. So at the start of this video, we looked at, at some other potential questions, but this is one that I think you will be using similar kinds of evidence no matter what comes up. So the question I, I've just done a little model paragraph for is, um, castle building was the main method used by the Normans to maintain control. How far does Wales, um, does the historic environment of Wales support this view? So you could use other stuff about castle building, but we want the bulk of your evidence to come from this historic environment of Wales. So this is what I've written. We've got, we're using our seed structure or our peel par um, paragraph structure, statement, evidence, explain, and then develop to get up there to your higher marks. 
Castle building was the main method of control by the Normans to control Wales because castles were strategically important to keep control. They were built along the Welsh marches by the marcher earls, for example, in Hereford, Chester and Shrewsbury, such as Chepstow Castle, built by Phil Fitz Osborne, with sprinkling in that specific evidence to show we know our stuff. Their plan was to build them next to a water source or on high ground to see attackers approaching, with Motten, where Motton Bailey um, castles were built as they were seen as the best for defence. This maintained control because they acted as a garrison, so that's like a base, for soldiers to be able to put down attacks. This meant that rebellions could be stopped quickly. And maybe if you're really showing off, you could link that in. This meant that rebellions could be stopped quickly. William was worried about rebellions because he'd seen just three years earlier the power that someone like Gruffydd ap Llewellyn could show in expanding Wales into, into English land, just if you were wanting to push that even further. Additionally, they acted as a symbolic reminder to the local Anglo-Saxon and Welsh population that they were controlled by the Normans. They were the superior ruling group. Maybe you link in those ideas of, of Romanesque structure um, that they would never have seen before, these curved walls or built in stone in ways that they wouldn't have seen before the Normans took charge. This made them less likely to rebel. That would be one paragraph, but then you need another factor. However, another method was the marcher lords, or another method was economic control. Talk about the fact that they are setting up these towns that then brings in people from Europe and other parts, um, uh, places like uh, the Flemish and Wizzo coming over or Normans coming. That's going to mean that it's going to be easier to keep control because they're your people. If Normans and other Europeans are coming, they're going to be less likely to rebel against you and it makes it easier to control that situation. OK, so best of luck with that. Remember, this is just for 2024 that Wales will come up. Make sure you can have some specific details in there um, and best of luck with your upcoming paper too. Bye bye.